By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And we are back at the Raging Bull series. We are now at the finals. Oh, this is so exciting. 76 players started, only to remain Kuhn versus Robert Young. And guess what? Both of these players almost have identical decks. It's completely insane. But both players are playing a Dead Guy Ale deck with blue power. So Dead Guy Ale on steroids. Both players are playing with Juice M Jins and Underworld Dreams. And of course with that white control package. But before I start with the deck decks actually, I would first like to point out that as always, you can also choose to skip that. I know so, some people prefer to go straight to the games. Check out the deck decks later. The easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the action. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to my Patreon page. And please consider uh, becoming a patron of this show. Check out patreon.com slash timmytalks. And the cool thing is, if you become a patron of the show, it already starts with just $1, by the way. You get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can join in on all the online Timmy Talks events. And your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. But um, just to, you know... Take a moment, maybe after the finals, check out patreon.com slash timmytalks if you're already a patron. Thank you so much. I know, for example, in this match that Kuhn is already a patron. Thank you, Kuhn, for your support. Talking about that, let's start with the deck decks and let's start with the deck of Kuhn. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Kuhn. So it's called Dead Guy Ale on steroids. Now, Dead Guy Ale refers to playing with a black and a white deck. So a combination of those two colors. And the steroids part refers to the three power cards and the brain geyser. And in this uh, case, there's a new steroid in town, which is Wheel of Fortune. So first check out those power cards. Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, Time Twister. I mean, those cards are splashed in a lot of decks for a simple reason. They're super good and make most decks even better, right? I mean, an Ancestral Recall, Time Walk, what deck wouldn't want to play those? And they're easy to splash because they only have one blue in their casting cost. Same thing goes for Time Twister. Uh, Brain Geyser, a little bit harder, right? A Sorcery, two blue and X. But of course, it allows you to draw cards. The, the card is simply so good. And what I like about Brain Geyser in this deck is that you can also use it as a finisher to kill your opponent. You can make something that's called the Blue Fireball because you're also playing with Underworld Dreams. So Underworld Dreams and Enchantment for three black from Legends that says every time your opponent draws a card, he or she takes a damage. So with your Brain Geyser, you can force your opponent to draw cards and they take a damage every time they do so. So, I mean, when he's low enough, of course, in most situations, you're just going to use the Brain Geyser for yourself. But I just wanted to, you know, to let you know this, that it could be a way to finish an opponent off. And I find it a really classy and fun way to do so. Um, talking about taking damage from the Underworld Dreams, he is also playing with one red card, and that is the Wheel of Fortune. I think it's a very good decision to play it in this deck because he's got the Black Lotus, he's got the Mox Ruby, he's got four City of Brasses. So, I mean... He, he can get he can get to the red mana, I think, with this. And it's just really good because, you know, uh, Wheel of Fortune, discard your hand, draw seven new cards, your opponent does the same thing. That means that if you've got one Underworld Dreams on the table, your opponent takes seven damage because you're going to draw seven new cards. If you have two Underworld Dreams on the table, you take 14 damage, right? So Wheel of Fortune in a deck with Underworld Dreams is just really good. And remember, he's also playing with Demonic Tutor, so he's got two chances of finding that card right out of his deck so that's really good and then of course you still have time twister as well you've got the brain geyser so i mean this is just just really really good now besides these cards the base of the deck is very solid right he's got a lot of uh answers to problems he's got disenchant he's got swords to plowshares he's got balance he's got uh of course the sinkholes as well you know to deal with those special lands so he's got a lot of answers and he's got a lot of threats check out that creature base Four Juzam Jins, five five powerhouse for four mana. What's not to love, man? This is dangerous. A lot of people they keep saying that you know sitting in a bottle is too good of a card, and I I agree. I think it could have designed better. I think we all agree upon that. But on the other hand, we keep seeing these powerful Arabian Nights creatures finding their way into the top of tournaments, right? So Renip Afrit and also the Juzam Jin. There are a lot of Juzam Jin decks at this tournament, which I love because I love the card. Uh, but on one side, it also surprises me because Maze is unbanned, City in the Bottle is a thing now. So, But it turns out it's just such a good card, you still play it. And of course, it's a love for this card as well. I'm sure that contributes also. Anyway, 
a very strong deck, Dead Guy Ill on steroids, a super deck. Now let's take a look at the deck of the opponent. And here we see the deck of Robert Young. And I mean, this is a Dead Guy Ill deck as well, right? As mentioned in the introduction, we're really in for a mirror match. And, you know, what I'm noticing here is there, there are so many resemblances between these decks. So what I think we should do here is look now at both decks at the same time. So we have Kuhn's deck on the left and, and we have Robert Young's deck on the right. And I'm just genuinely surprised to see both of these decks in the finals. I'm not surprised that these decks are doing well, you know, but I am surprised that these two identical decks are meeting each other in the finals. I mean, this is a tournament with 76 players. We have the deck being involved here. Um, you know, we have Mono Green being involved. We have Robots. There are just so many good players with good decks at this event. And then these two identical or almost identical decks are facing each other off here in the finals. And I'm now looking at these two decks, you know, face to face, trying to find the differences. I mean, okay, I see one more Juzam Jin on the side of, um, of Kuhn. And I guess Robert John is playing with one more Underworld Dreams. He's playing with one, Robert John is playing with one less Sengir Vampire. Um, I mean, what are the differences? I see only three Disenchants in the deck of Robert John and the Divine Offering. And Kuhn has chosen to go with four Disenchants and then play the Divine Offerings on the side so he can still, you know, slip those in if he wants to. So these are really like minimal uh, differences. I think a really interesting choice that Robert John has made in his deck is he's chosen to play with an Armageddon. So he's going with three sinkholes and an Armageddon. So that one Armageddon, maybe it can make a little dent. And then of course, I guess the interesting choice by Kuhn is the addition of the Wheel of Fortune. So it's almost like those are the only two differences in their deck, right? Is that one Wheel of Fortune on the side of Kuhn and one Armageddon on the side of Robert John. And the interesting thing is that both cards can have a huge impact, right? I mean, if you're playing Underworld Dreams, and uh, you cast the Wheel of Fortune, it can just destroy your opponent. But the same can be said from the Armageddon. If you time it right, it can destroy all the lands. And then, you know, if you have the better creature on the board, that can also give you the win. That can have a huge impact as well. So two small differences. It's only one card, but they can have a huge impact. And the rest, yeah, it's just the same. It's just the same. I mean, does that mean that we are in for a really close, exciting breathtaking final i really do hope so because i think this tournament deserves a thriller of a final and now that we've looked at both decks it means we are ready after this episode we will know who is the champion of the raging bull series will it be kun or will it be robert john both players playing almost identical decks let's go to the finals Game number one of the finals, here we go. So both players playing Dead Guy Ale on steroids. So white, black with a power splash. We have Robert Jan on the left. We have Kuhn on the right. Kuhn is also playing with one red card, the Wheel of Fortune. And on the left side, we have Robert Jan, who is playing with Armageddon. Those are two big differences. Also, Kuhn is playing Brain Geyser in his main 60. So that can make a dent as well. Both players playing... Um, you know, Juice and Jin playing um, Underworld Dreams. So there are a lot of here. Look at that. Turn one, Robert John, Underworld Dreams, hitting the board there. Dark Ritual into the Dreams. And Kunir taking his first point of damage, dropping to 19. Those cards in the middle there, by the way, are the price cards. So a Mark Tedden Chaos Orb there. And of course, the Raging Bull with all the names of all the participants of the old school tournament here we see kun starting with a soul ring another dark ritual a second underworld dreams but no land drop though from robert john but hey if you've got all those rituals who needs lands anyway so now kun is taking two damage attorneys already on 17. And that also, you know, that does two things. I mean, it, it, it does damage to Kuhn, obviously, but it also means that it's going to be tougher for Kuhn to play out cards that let him draw cards, right? I mean, his Time Twister, his Ancestral Recall, his Brain Geyser, his Wheel of Fortune, they're all now pretty bad because of the uh, Underworld Dreams. There we see a sinkhole on the only land of Robert John. Ooh, that is painful. And then the question, of course, is should Robert John have taken a mulligan here or not? Or was it a good keep? Time will tell. There is a Mox Ruby. He's got five mana. Are we going to see a Juzem Jin? Or a Sengir Vampire? 
There's a city of brass, so lots of land, lots of mana for Kun. What is he gonna do? Tapping three. Are we gonna see an Hypnotic Spectre? Exactly, that's it. Hypnotic Spectre, two, two flyer. Every time it uh, damages the opponent, the opponent has to discard a card at random. That makes this card so good that you've got to discard at random. Really difficult to deal with. And especially for Robert John because he's got no lands. He needs a land. Seems to be in the tank here. Although I think if you have a land or a mox, you would simply play it out. Maybe a Black Lotus. Okay, there's a Black Lotus. I mean... Now I understand why Robert John needed time to think, because if you play the Black Lotus without using it straight away, you could run into, of course, a disenchant. But then again, if you keep it in hand, you could lose it to the Hypnotic Spectre. So I think this is a good play by Robert John. Here's the attack from Kuhn, and Robert John's going to lose a sinkhole. That's not too bad. Let's see what else Kuhn can do. So Robert John dropping here to 18. Kuhn now on 13, by the way, so taking a lot of damage from those Underworld Dreams. And Kuhn really in the tank here. Perhaps he's got some draw spells and thinking, do I want to draw, but I'll take two damage per card. I mean, if you Ancestral Recall yourself, I mean, you take six points of damage, which uh, seems to be pretty risky. Demonic Tutor, okay. That works around the Underworld Dreams because you're not drawing the card. I wonder what he's going to pick up. Could simply be a disenchant to get rid of the Black Lotus. Or maybe a Mind Twist to twist away the hand of Robert John. Another option could be a Jews M. Jin. I actually think that a Mind Twist here, you know, although it's it's a, it's not the most fun card in the game, but I think a Mind Twist here is a very good decision to make. Because it would also mean that the Black Lotus is kind of useless. And it would force Robert John to be on top decking mode. And whatever he then draws, he wants to play it out immediately, sacking his Lotus anyway, because of the Hypnotic Spectre on the side of Kuhn. I mean, Ancestral Recall could be an option, but as mentioned before, that would mean you give yourself six points of damage, so I wouldn't do that. A Juzem could be it. But look at that, he's looked it up and passed a turn, so I guess if it was a Mind Twist, he would twist for three straight away, so I guess it was something else. Really curious to see what it's going to be. Robert John just passing the turn, though, not able to find any lands or anything else that he wants to maybe play out with the Black Lotus. So very unfortunate game number one here for Robert John. Had that good opener with Dark Ritual into Underworld Dreams and then next turn playing the second one. But after that, he did absolutely nothing. There's the attack. He's gonna lose a card, take two damage, gonna go to 16. Oh, he's thinking about it. So maybe he's got a Swords in hand. The problem here is of course, if he Swords, Uses the Swords to Plowshares. He's got to sack the Black Lotus. But he is doing it. And I understand this play. I under this, is, this is not a bad play. This is understandable. And remember, there's no mana burn in Swedish. So that's why he's not taking any damage from the other two unspent mana from the Black Lotus. And now Kuhn is going to go into the second main. I mean, if he plays out another Hypnotic Spectre, that would just be devastating for Robert John. I still wonder what card he looked up with the Demonic Tutor. Tapping. Sengir Vampire. Liking it. If it was the Sengir that he looked up, I love his style. Okay, there's a, there's a land, finally. Scrub land. Hopefully, Robert John has another Swords to Plowshares to take care of the Sengir. I mean, if Robert John can plow the Sengir, you know, find some mana, maybe draw into a Time Twister, everything is still possible. There's a tap for four. Oh, there's the Mind Twist. Lovely altered one. And look at that, losing a Chaos Orb, a white card that I can't identify, and a Jews M. Jin, but this is so painful. A Chaos Orb is so good. Oh, man. Oh, and a sinkhole to make matters even worse. Kicking it over John while he's already down. He's on 14. Finding a Mox passing the turn. And that's so sour for Robert John here, you know. I mean, 
if he could have found that Mox just a little bit early, at least he could have played out the Chaos Orb and then maybe next turn with a little bit of luck flip on the Sangir Vampire. It's not meant to be though. Kuhn is on 8, now playing out his own Underworld Dreams. Gonna attack with the Vampire, I assume, putting Robert John here on 10 and Nick or on 9 even. Next turn, drawing a card. Or did he? Oh, he already took the damage from the Underworld Dreams. That's why he went to nine. Okay, so he's on nine, passing the turn. You can see on his demeanor, the way he's sitting, he's like, okay, I'm not going to win this one anymore. But he's still really close, though. I mean, look at the life total of, uh, of Kuhn. He's now on six. But the problem here really is the mana. There's a disenchant on one of the dreams, so he's going to drop to four. If he can find a white source and a source, maybe, that he already has in hand... Or a balance. Nope. Picking up the cards. Oh, yeah. That was a little bit uh, disappointing here for Robert John. Choosing to keep that hand with the double ritual and the double underworld dreams. Not a bad decision. But, of course, then you do need to draw into lands. And it just wasn't meant to be. Also, the sinkholes of Kuhn came at uh, the exact right time. And that, I mean, that time twi uh, that um, I wanted to say time twister. Uh, but I mean the mind twist. The mind twist was just an absolute killer for... Uh, for Robert John there. Anyway, both players are going to dive into their sideboards. I wonder if we're going to see the Black Knights on the on the side of Robert John. That would be quite interesting. And uh, we are going to catch back up with these two players in uh, game number two. Game number two. Here we go. So we have Robert John on the play after losing that first game. Starting with a City of Brass. Passing the turn. So no Underworld Dreams turn one here for Robert John, but hopefully for him more mana, more lands in this second game. Here we see Kuhn starting with an Underground Sea, passing the turn as well. So both players kind of having a slow start. There is a Mishra's Factory. Tapping, taking a damage, taking a time walk here. So this card's being played as a tempo play here in the finals. I mean, it gets you ahead a land, which is quite good and possibly if he can find, for example, a black mana, he could cast his Hypnotic Spectre. <laughs> Going through his hand, can he find Lance here? Tapping two or animating, just attacking for two though. Oh, again, no Lance here. Ancestral Recall on the end step of Robert John. This is so painful here for Robert John. Again, having problems with the Lance. You know, after game one and now in game two, it's the same scenario. Let's hope for Robert John that Kuhn cannot find a sinkhole, for example. That would be pretty devastating for him. He's going to tap two. Is he also going to play a time walk here? Let's see what he can do. Looks like he's quite hesitant here. Play out a Demonic Tutor. I wonder what card he's going to pick up. I mean, his hand is already chock full. Perhaps a Black Lotus? To maybe play out, for example, a Hypnotic Specter or simply just to empty the hand, maybe a Mox. Mind Twist could be an option again, depending, of course, on how many lands he's got in hand. Shuffling up here. How many cards does he have? It's hard to see. And I really hope for this finals that, that Robert John is going to find a land on top of his library, you know. Yeah, so he looked up a land, it seems. So it's a, a scrub land here. White and black duel. And now Kuhn has to discard. I think he's got eight in hand, perhaps even nine. Ooh, he's taking the land back. Interesting. Does he have another option? He's going to discard a disenchant. Discard a vampire and not play out the land. Interesting. Oh, he already played out a land for turn, perhaps? That's it, probably. That's why he took the land back. 
I always get a little bit confused when players start playing time walks, right? Because then, then the order, the amount of lands doesn't make sense anymore. Exactly. So Kuhn already played out a land, so I had to take it back into his hand. And again, Robert John missed a land drop. Oh, and there's a single. Yeah, and now it's going to be so difficult for Robert John. This is so frustrating. You've been playing Magic the whole day. Remember, we started this tournament at 11 and, and it lasted till 10 or 11 or even 12. I can't remember, but it, it took a full day, a full day of playing cards. You've, you've reached the finals and then you're in game two after not finding lands in game one. And guess what? In game two, again, you're not finding any lands. And of course, your opponent's going to find an Ancestral Recall and sinkhole your lands away. When it rains, it pours, right? That's the expression. That's what we're seeing here. There's Hypnotic Spectre making matters even worse. Also, uh, Robert John, of course, losing that City of Brass, so no longer having access to white mana. This is super frustrating. If I was Robert John, I would start ordering beer right now. I would just go, you know, keep him coming. <laughs> I mean, he's not out yet. Okay, Black Lotus, that's something. Black Lotus, but no follow-up play, though. That is unfortunate. I mean, a Juice M. Jin would have been kind of nice. There's the attack for two, so he's going to drop to 15, and he's going to lose a card. This is really bad. Losing the swords, of course he's going to lose the swords. And let's see what else Kun can do here. Still has... Three lands untapped. Haven't hasn't played out a land for turn yet. So also could choose to do that. If he has another if not expector. Exactly. He would see the other land, City of Brass. Another another hippie would be super painful. Are we gonna see disenchant? Oh, this is nasty. It's a good play by Kuhn, and I get it, but this is so nasty. Robert John here, oh, he must be getting super depressed. Passing the turn, nothing he can do. I mean, when you're Robert John, you make that decision in game two not to use your um, your Black Lotus to cast a sword. You know, that's a conscious choice. In game one, you did choose to use your Black Lotus and it didn't pay off. So in game two, you think, you know, I'm going to go in a slightly different direction, be a bit more optimistic. Hopefully I can find a white source. And then you lose your swords, and next turn you also see a disenchant on your Black Lotus here. Jews M. Jin, by the way, by Kuhn. It looks like this final is already over before it really began. But it happens, you know, that's part of magic as well. You have these games. There's nothing you can do about it. I mean, issues with lands... You know, being land screwed, it's, it's, it's a part of the game, you know. Just being mana flooded, it's the same story. It happens. But uh, it is very, very unfortunate for Robert John that it has to happen in the finals after a full day of playing brilli brilliantly with, uh, with this deck. I believe Robert John had zero losses in the Swiss round, for example. Another Juzam. I mean, at least you get killed by two beautiful Juzams. That's something. Nope, that's it. I mean, his only out... Would have been planes and then into balance, I think. That would have been his only out. Anyway, let's not forget that Kuhn is winning here. Kuhn is our champion, the Raging Bull Series champion. Congratulations, Kuhn. You're going to get that bull ring. And you are going to get this uh, the Raging Bull sign there in the middle of the table. And, of course, that beautiful Chaos Orb drawing done by Mark Tedden himself. Congratulations, Kuhn, for winning the Raging Bull Series 2023. I salute you, sir. Well done. And here we see the picture, by the way, of uh, Richard, the tournament organizer, together with the winner, Kuhn. I mean, this has been a blast making these videos, being there on the day itself. It's been absolutely fantastic. I'd like to thank a few people here. First of all, of course, I'd like to thank Richard. It's been phenomenal. I also would like to thank Avert. He's also been part of uh, organizing this event. And uh, also Dion. Dion, you've done an amazing job. He's the man who's taken all the pictures. But more importantly, he has set this up. The screen, the quality is phenomenal. It's absolutely amazing. The equipment that you have and that you're willing to set it all up, to do that all in your free time, out of the love for old school magic. Thank you so, so much. It's been absolutely fantastic. And here you see a picture, by the way, of myself together with Richard on the day. It's been an absolute, absolute blast. And I'm so looking forward 
to next year. So, I mean, 2024, we're gonna rock it again, I hope. And I just wanna say, Richard, please continue to organize these events because it's absolutely fantastic. And Dion as well, please continue, man, to, uh, to come by to set up all the all your fantastic equipment it's it's absolutely amazing like without you the quality of the of the images wouldn't be as grand as it is so thank you so much for that and also of course thank you the viewer for watching for leaving the comments for sharing your positivity i mean old school magic is nowhere without the commu community so i mean thank you guys man just thank you guys i hope you've enjoyed this video series let me know in the comments below if you did. And if you have a moment, please uh, visit patreon.com slash timmytalks and consider becoming a, a patron of the show. It already starts with $1 and for that dollar, you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord and your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video. Every video, including this one, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. What shall we do with the drunken What shall we do with the drunken sailor? What shall we do? Somebody can see.